hey guys so welcome to the academy just let me know if you people can see me so just comment hi hello i can see you or something like that so that i know that i'm live and we can start with the session so guys can you hear me please a few comments will be great i just want to know if i'm live or not whether you are able to see me and hear me if the connection is fine a uh, couple of highs will be great oh okay uh, thank you mahesh thank you sona thank you bharti for your messages so i think we are live so we can start so let's go so my name is shiva prasad i am one of the verified educators at an academy so you know it's the largest free free learning platform in india if you want to you know take up more of the courses so you can definitely download the an academy learning app okay and uh, thank you for the awesome response yesterday for my first quiz and i was impressed that a lot of you could get the answers right because those were you know good level of questions which required a solid understanding of things that are happening around you okay so kudos to you guys and i'm sure you will do very well so that is the reason i'm going to bring out to you another you know set of questions so let us see how well you are doing uh, you know this time so let me start so we are doing a live quest for science and technology for prelims 2018 and this particular course is being presented by me shiva prasad so before we start a little bit about myself i am one of the top rankers of je examination so i got admission to indian institute of science bangalore that is iisc bangalore and i also have cleared the prelims last year and appeared for mains examination with public administration as an optional okay so that is all about me so as i told you yesterday also you can expect up to 8 to 20 10 questions from uh, science and technology okay and those all all those questions will be conceptual questions which means that you know you have to understand uh, them conceptually and they will mostly be from the recent developments okay so let me start with the first question okay so yesterday people were asking me about lifi i thought why not make a question about light okay everybody knows light l i g h t light okay so here's the question what exactly is light here are the statements okay light is made up of photons hence it is a particle okay so this is the first statement light is a particle and it is made up of photons okay second statement is light is an electromagnetic wave okay so this is the second statement and the third third statement is both light is both a particle and a wave and the fourth statement will be light is neither a particle nor a wave okay so let me you know give this to you guys what do you think what do you think is light okay i'm getting answers come on i'll just give you you know a few seconds maybe 10 seconds for you to come up with the answer a lot of you are giving me answers like both okay and uh, sona is giving me b which means light is only an electromagnetic wave priyanka surbi akshay kishore vijay you are all getting the answers right sumit viyush that's great guys because you have to understand that light is both a particle and a electromagnetic wave okay so uh, i think i have to give you one information because you know the thing about gravitation waves going around a lot of people have this misconception that albert einstein was given uh, the nobel prize for his work related to general theory of relativity which is not correct okay albert einstein he won the nobel prize for his work on photoelectric effect okay and this photoelectric effect is what displayed the fact that you know light is not just a wave but light is also a particle and light is made made up of photons okay so therefore light is a particle on the other hand light is also an electromagnetic wave okay because light shows phenomena for example there is a phenomena called as interference and there is another phenomena called as diffraction you don't need to know these in detail just in case you know a question comes about you can just remember these terms they they are interference okay and a diffraction so because light is exhibiting these phenomena which are absorbed in waves so that is the reason we will see that you know light has both characteristics of a particle and a wave okay i just repeat myself light is a particle because it is made up of photons and light is a wave electromagnetic wave because it is exhibiting phenomena like diffraction and interference okay so this is the question and most of you i think all of you have got this question right so that's great so let us now increase the difficulty level of the questions okay so i'm going to ask this question with respect to the gravitational force first of all before i proceed with this uh, question so let me ask you guys a question what are the four fundamental forces in nature okay so i'll just give you a 10 uh, gap of 10 seconds let's see how many of you get this question right 
what are the four fundamental forces of nature okay let us see i hope i'm still live and you guys can hear me and see me so the question is what are the four fundamental forces that are observed in nature okay uh, yes gravitational force is correct nuclear force is correct but what nuclear force there are two types of nuclear forces okay uh, potential kinetic energy is not what i'm talking about those are basically energies they are not forces okay i'm talking about force the fundamental force and yeah the gravitational force is correct okay uh, centripetal centrifugal are not the fundamental forces okay weak and strong nuclear forces yes and uh, vikas singh has got all the four correct sorry the solar is not answer sorry three of them are right okay so i'll just give you the answer the four forces are gravitational force okay then electromagnetic force then we have strong nuclear forces and weak nuclear forces okay so these are the four fundamental forces that are observed in nature okay i'll repeat myself the four fundamental forces of nature are gravitational force okay then weak nuclear forces strong nuclear forces and electromagnetic force okay so these are the four forces and uh, yeah divya pandey has also got it right okay so let, here's a question with respect to the you know one of the fundamental forces that is gravitational force you have to identify which of these statements are correct okay so the first statement is gravitational force is the weakest of the all the four forces okay is gravitational force the weakest among all the four forces this is statement number 1 statement number 2 is gravitational force is always attractive in nature okay you know right positive positive you have they repel each other while positive negative they attract each other so gravitational force is always attractive in nature this is the second statement the third statement is the force increases with increasing distance okay so that means uh, you know uh, let us say here is earth and here you are you move away from the earth the third statement is saying that when you move away from the earth the gravitational force of you know earth on you it increases with increasing distance this is the third statement okay and the fourth statement is the force is you know it it is independent of the mass of the object okay so the fourth statement says that the gravitational force that is affecting you is independent of the mass of the object okay so let us see uh, akshat verma is giving me first and second are correct which is perfectly fine first and second even piyush has got it right and uh, nazim is saying third is false which is also right okay so a lot of you are giving me correct answer uma maheshwar reddy is getting one and two right okay third and fourth are wrong so fine i'll give you the answer uh, so the first statement was it is the weakest of the four fundamental forces which is correct okay because it is weaker than the weak nuclear forces strong nuclear forces and also the electromagnetic force you have to remember and this is a question you know that appeared in the uh, prelims examination also so the weakest of the four fundamental forces is the gravitational force okay the second statement is it is always attractive in nature yes gravity always attracts you okay have you heard about gravity repelling you pushing you off earth no that does not happen no so therefore the answer the second statement is also right that gravitational force is always attractive in nature let's now take up take up the third uh, you know statement the force it increases with increasing distance okay so just imagine the, here is earth and you're moving away from the earth uh, don't you think this statement is wrong because the further you move away from the earth the gravitational force of the earth it decreases right it there we have what is called as a newton's inverse law okay that means with increasing distance the gravitational force it also decreases okay so hence this is an inverse proportionality that means with increasing distance the gravitational force decreases okay so therefore all of you are right the fact that you know the third statement is wrong okay and the fourth statement is the force is independent on the mass of the object okay so the fourth statement is the gravitational force is independent of the mass of the object okay this is also a very wrong statement because you know that you know mass does not uh, mass does not change but the gravitational force i gave you an example yesterday also if you are here at earth and if you are here at moon your weight that you measure is actually reduced okay because the gravitational force is dependent on the mass of the object okay this is uh, so therefore the first two statements are right and the third and fourth statement are wrong okay so let me now take up a third question this question will be a little of higher level okay so what is the chandra shekhar limit associated with okay so first of all you need to understand the fact that you know there are very few indians who have won nobel prize okay and here i am taking up the name of a person who has won a nobel prize in physics so you know this person uh, chandra shekhar right another person to win a nobel prize in physics was cv raman okay so i am talking about yes for his raman effect raman effect thank you arpit 
okay so we are talking about chandra shekhar limit okay from the name itself you know this is by the person uh, chandra shekhar okay who used to work on black holes and all okay so what exactly is the term chandra shekhar limit associated with what limit is it i'll give you the option it is the speed limit of light okay chandra shekhar limit we are talking about chandra shekhar limit option a is it is the speed limit of light option 2 it is the limit of the angular momentum of a rotating black hole okay then the third statement is it is the mass limit of a star okay and the fourth statement is it is the time limit up to which a star can survive okay so i'll just repeat the question so what is the chandra shekhar limit associated with what is the limit if we are talking about okay so the first statement was the speed of light it is the limit for a speed of light the second statement it is the limit for the angular momentum of a rotating black hole the third statement is it it refers to chandra shekhar limit it refers to the mass limit of a star okay and the fourth statement is it refers to the time limit up to which a star can survive okay so let me see how many of you have given the answer a lot of you are giving me 3 2 1 but uh, yeah sandeep has got it right then anuj yadav has got it right then we have karishma okay so all of them are saying 3 which is the correct answer because chandra shekhar limit is basically a limit of the mass okay so therefore you know that uh, a star okay for example even our sun is a star so all these stars they have a limited amount of time that they can survive so that is you know billions of years uh, that is different thing but nevertheless they can only live up as far as their nuclear energy can allow them to live okay after that what happens is when they run out of this nuclear energy they start to collapse upon themselves so these stars actually they collapse upon their own gravity and this is called as a death of a star okay so after the death of a star what happens after a star dies so it can also you know turn into a black hole it can you know our sun won't turn into a black hole because this is where the chandra shekhar limit comes so chandra shekhar limit specifies the mass okay if the mass of a star is less than this particular mass that means it won't turn into a black hole after it dies okay so that is what this chandra shekhar limit is all about it is basically a limit of the mass okay so if a star has a mass which is less than the chandra shekhar limit that means that particular star after its death will not turn into a black hole okay so i hope you can uh, you know understand this concept so this is what the chandra shekhar limit is associated with okay so and uh, the reason why i am giving this particular concept to you is because you know we uh, chandra shekhar was an indian and he is also a nobel prize winner so that is the reason upsc might ask this okay so here we go so now let's move to the next question so this is with respect to intellectual property rights okay so identify the correct statements regarding the intellectual property and intellectual property rights okay so are you there guys okay cool uh, so you have to identify the correct options statements regarding the intellectual property and intellectual property rights okay so here is the first statement intellectual property is basically a creation of the mind and it only includes those that are technological innovations okay so this is the first statement hear it properly intellectual property is a creation of the mind okay and it only includes those that are technological innovations so this is statement number 1 okay so tell me if statement number 1 is right or wrong okay so yeah i'm already getting anupam garima anka they are saying that it is wrong okay so let's move to the second statement patents copyright trademarks these are all forms of intellectual property rights so this is the second statement okay that the patents copyright and trademarks are forms of intellectual property rights okay so the second statement uh, yeah it is true that's what majority of you are saying let's take out the third statement special 301 report that is published by us united states trade representative featured india in the priority watch list okay so this is something from your current affairs so i'll repeat the statement two more times special 301 report that is published by united states trade representative it featured india in the priority watch list okay so a lot of people are saying that third statement is correct okay so let's now analyze from the first statement the first statement was intellectual property is a creation of the mind yes intellectual property itself means anything that you create of the mind but you know you can see and it only includes those that are technological innovation this is wrong 
because you know it's an absolute statement it is saying that it only includes the technological innovations okay it does not matter even the video that i am creating right now even the you know quiz the questions that i have created right now these are also part of the intellectual property only okay so these are all creation of the mind these are not technological innovations okay even if i write a song if i sing a song if i write a poem all these become a part of my intellectual property okay it is not limited to technological innovation so this is the reason first the statement is wrong okay so yes you are correctly identified okay so the second statement patents copyrights trademarks these are forms of intellectual property rights okay so all of you have said that this is a correct answer correct statement which is of course right because uh, patents copyrights trademarks are definitely part of the intellectual property rights okay so let's now take up the third statement special 301 report published by us trade representative featured india in the priority watch list okay so and all of you since you are following current affairs all of you have said that this statement is correct which is definitely right because you know india is a part of the priority watch list and the reason why we are part of this watch list is because of our weak intellectual property right regime okay for example as soon as a movie is released we are publishing it online okay we do not have anything with respect to copyright etc okay so this is the reason uh, the united states trade representative you know it added india to the priority watch list in its special 301 report okay so i hope you got all this correct so let us now take something up with re the respect to the developments in the cyber world okay so recently you know there was this ransomware attack okay then there was the distributed denial of service attack so definitely a question will be uh, framed from this also and also you know in uh, one of the yojana magazines uh, uh, there was uh, a comprehensive article done on the information technology act where they have discussed the different uh, articles okay 66a 66b which were related to uh, cyber crimes etc okay so let us now I'll, i'll give you a question related to cyber security okay uh, wanna cry yes somebody is commenting wanna cry and all yes that is what we are talking about it was a ransomware it was called ran uh, wanna cry so let us now uh, here's a question identify which of the cyber attacks are correctly defined okay i'll give you the names of the cyber attacks you have to tell me okay if they are correctly defined or not okay so first of all i'll talk about the denial of service attack okay recently we had a denial of service attack so denial of service attack is an attack to overwhelm the target website okay so this is the first statement distributed sorry denial of service attack is an attack to overwhelm the target website okay so tell me if this is a right statement or wrong okay let us see what you guys have to tell me okay so is denial of service attack an attack to overwhelm the target website so yes sunidhi is saying true vijay is saying wrong a uh, lot of you are saying tharani vinay they are saying no okay uh, we'll leave this we'll take up later the second statement is trojan okay so trojan is defined as a program that pretends to do one thing but in actual it is doing something else okay so this is a trojan trojan is being defined as a program okay which pretends to do something but in actual it is doing another thing okay so john anka vikas all of you are saying the correct answer you are saying yes so let's now move to the third statement okay i'll take all these up and explain it to you third is the ransomware ransomware is a type of malicious software that threatens to publish the victim's data online or it blocks the access to those data unless a ransom is paid okay so i'll define ransomware again it is a type of malicious software that blocks the access to a person's files until and unless a ransom is paid okay so all of you are saying true there's not even a single answer that is saying false okay uh, so i'll take it up soon let's let me take the fourth statement and we'll discuss them one by one the fourth statement is phishing p h i s i n g so this is the term that you read most of the time in your gmail account etc it says that right don't submit your information online this seems to be a phishing site p h i s s i n g so this term you might have seen you know in your emails and all it says that do not submit your personal details because this seems to be a phishing site okay so let us see uh, so this term uh, phishing it is different different as pretending to be someone else to make the victim reveal personal inter information over the net okay so i'll just repeat the definition of phishing pretending to be someone else to make the victim reveal personal details over the internet okay so a lot of you are saying 
yes so amol vijay and you thank you so much you are saying you are being you are awesomely responding to all my questions okay so let me take all those things one by one first of all is denial of service attack all the four statements are correct first of all so in denial of service attack what happens is you know you overwhelm a target website for example let us say i target upsc's website and tomorrow they are going to announce the results okay i don't want any of you to access those so what i do is i keep attacking upsc's website so that you know you legitimate users who want to check your results you are not able to access the upsc's website okay so this is the uh, meaning of distributed sorry denial of service attack okay so the so therefore the first statement was defined properly the second statement is trojan okay trojan is defined as program that pretends to do something but in reality it is doing something else for example you have downloaded something from the internet okay and let us say it is according to you it is playing some songs okay on the back end what it is doing is it is deleting your files okay so it is pretending to play your movies play your songs but on the back end it is deleting your files okay so this is basically a trojan okay so i hope you can understand this so then the third is ransomware the most famous ransomware and all of you are uh, you know giving me a wanna cry answer and somebody does not want me to attack upsc's website so anyway so wanna cry was in the news in ransomware what happens was so basically uh, you know when you download this virus over the internet what happens is blocks access okay for example you are working on files it will encrypt your files that means when you want to access your own files it will ask for a password and since you do not create that password you will not have that password so what the attackers do is they say that okay fine we will give you the password but in return we want you to pay a ransom exactly what happens in kidnapping you know when person is kidnapped and in return they want you to pay a ransom okay that also happens in ransomware where the you know data is being kidnapped and uh, data gets kidnapped and until and unless you pay a ransom so you do not you know get to access your files so that is the meaning of a ransomware so the third statement is also right and we are talking about the fourth statement which is phishing okay p h i s i n g that is uh, which is defined as pretending to be someone else to make the victim reveal personal information over the net okay so that is also a correct statement so what happens is over the net uh, you might receive a few emails where you know they ask for personal details like your bank details etc okay uh, which will you know compromise you basically so that is what a phishing site basically does they pretend to be someone that they are not okay and uh, you know they try to reveal information about you so therefore all the four statements will be correct okay so this was the last question with related to which was related to cyber you know security and also if there is something you want to ask me you can you know i'm here for a couple of minutes you can definitely ask me okay so and also let me take this opportunity to tell you about the plus course i have launched so it is related to public administration which is an optional subject for mains examination okay so if uh, public administration is an optional for mains uh, and you want to know how to answer questions and score about 160 marks in both the papers you know uh, then you can definitely enroll for that course okay uh, the link will be made available just beneath the video so you can definitely you know access that and uh, okay so if that is all thank you so much and best of luck for your prelims examination good luck